today the topic of my discussion is homeostasis which is also initially named in French as value interior. What is the meaning of homeostasis? Homeo means same. It remains same. Stasis means stand still. That means over a long period till the organism survives, it remains within a normal consistently constant. So, but it is not that it is 100% constant, it comes within a range. So the range of something, for example, temperature or blood sugar can be broad or narrow. That means the person or the organism will survive properly only when the <coughs> temperature is within the range or the sugar is within the range. It can fluctuate but within the range. So this is homeostasis. Now homeostasis means that this concerns our internal environment. Environment inside our body or of the body of any organism. May it be a plant, a animal or a bird or a fish or the dinosaurs were there. So, external environment is always subject to change. <clears throat> sometimes it is hot, sometimes it is cold, sometimes it is very humid, sometimes it is dry. And there are many other changes in the external environment like there can be an attack on a person. Attack by the viruses, by the bacteria, by the fungi, uh, by various diseases. We recently had a COVID pandemic. So this ultimately tries to change our internal environment because if the internal environment is not changed, we are okay. So basically this is a war or battle of survival for every living organism that the external environment is constantly changing in every aspect. Maybe it is physical, maybe psychological, maybe biochemical. So, but the internal environment has to be consistently constant within a range. That is homeostasis or milieu interior. This is the development of our evolution as you may believe in Darwin's theory of evolution. So, if we go back to the Darwin's theory of evolution, there was a unicellular organism, which can be bacteria or some other organism, bacilli, fungi, so these also had some defense mechanisms, for example, they will increase their metabolic rate. If they are going to say very cold weather, you can find some bacteria right in Antarctica or deep inside the ice, many kilometers inside the ice. Or you can find in deserts. So these all they secrete shells outside it and they survive sometimes for thousands or lakhs or millions of years but <clears throat> over the period of time they became multicellular means many cells they joined together and they formed a colony or a family so this helped them to uh, save some temperature and grow better some safety measure and that the life evolved in the sea because sea water is saline and the osmosis is somewhat like uh, our extracellular fluid. So ultimately these cells, they formed and created their own sea inside which they could regulate. Otherwise they were subject to outside changes. For example, the temperature goes up and the bacteria either hibernates or dies or goes becomes cold or there are chemicals outside they cannot survive. But here they have their internal environment which is external to the cells that is why called extracellular fluid so these primitive organisms they had developed inside the, the sea they created their own small sea and then these developed further into many types of organisms like there was the age of dinosaurs the human beings the animals so they form different type of groups which are all covered by the epithelium 
Our skin is covered by epithelium which can be mucus or skin or our intestine which is an open tube we eat from mouth and we defecate. This is open tube open to the environment similarly respiratory system or mouth and pharynx and larynx and the trachea and lungs. These are open to the outside system. They are also covered by the epithelium or skin or mucosa. So these have inside they diversified into various types of groups of cells. Now this cells, this organism which is a present complicated organism, this is a miracle that we survive in spite of so many outside changes which are constantly taking place which can be man-made or which can be environment made uh, and in many types of problems there can be wars, there can be pollution, uh, there can be deprivation or over uh, problems. So these all things are called disruptors. They disrupt the external environment. So when the external environment is disrupted, so this generates a stimulus. For example, temperature goes up and the body temperature we are within the environment and the body temperature we go to a desert or a hot place so we start uh, having a disruptor that is a high temperature or somebody loses fluids due to diarrhea or vomiting or is unable to take fluid inside is at a place with no water or electrolytes are available so or goes to a uh, drowns and or drinks too much fluid or the body retains too much fluid so either it becomes dry or it becomes too much bad too much hot or too much cold similarly gases if somebody is uh, sleeping inside with a fire or the fire takes place or there is other environmental problem there is carbon monoxide or high carbon dioxide or low oxygen so various places due to various reasons the oxygen either the person is not able to breathe due to some lung disease or many other problems which we are not discussing we are discussing basic problem of homeostasis so that either the oxygen goes down or the carbon dioxide or some other chemical a gas like carbon monoxide which is very dangerous goes up so similarly pH our pH means acid base we are a biochemical machine and in our biochemistry, our cells basically, they form a tissue. Tissue form an organ. Organ forms a system. And systems form a complete organism. So in which cells of every type, in every system, in every tissue and organ are the basic things. So if the, in the pH, anything which is not normal, temperature, fluid electrolytes with the potassium is high or low, sodium is high or low, magnesium is high or low and uh, pH, acid. If the patient has acidosis, he may have or she may have a cardiac arrest and similarly if the potassium is uh, high, you know, the person may again have a cardiac arrest and the potassium is low, hypokalemia, the person may have irritable heart and so on and so forth, so many problems. So in this case, uh, like a blood sugar level goes up, it goes up very high. So the person may have hyperglycemic, hyperosmotic, and uh, hyperkalemic, may go into a coma stage, may become unconscious, vomiting with pain of the month. So this can be if its sugar goes low, person again may have fits because the neurons will not receive enough uh, blood sugar and the person will have sweating, person may become unconscious because the brain is not getting enough sugar. So similarly blood pressure it goes very low, the blood supply to various organs which is very vital to the brain, to the liver, to the heart itself, to all the vital organs, the multiple organ failure slowly then to shock will become irreversible shock, multiple organ failure and death. So these things within the range have to be corrected. So this we should know that what are we, our bodies. Our bodies are basically a, a colony. I am a colony and I have skin. I have under the skin, I have fat, blood vessels, various types of gland, apocrine glands and uh, brain, 
and eyes and ears, the senses, all senses, the place to think and coordinate, uh, automatic coordination by the brain, uh, which is autonomous working endocrinal system, and uh, which the, our body is trained over the period of time in the evolution. And sometimes we have to think how to correct the internal environment or take help from a doctor or a hospital how to conduct the internal environment. But basically we are discussing today's auto-regulation. So these things we have extra vascular fluid. Under the epithelium there is fluid uh, which is extra vascular fluid and intravascular fluid inside the vessel whether they are lymphatic vessels or blood vessel, arteries or veins. And then intracellular fluid. Ultimately, the aim is that intracellular fluid, the cells of the body must function normally, all the cells of the body. The myocardial cells, the neurons, uh, all the hepatocytes, the nephrons and every cell of the body has to function normally. And that is our central point of homeostasis, the central aim of homeostasis, that these things have to be regulated. Now, how these are regulated within a range? That is a negative, basically a negative feedback mechanism. For example, again coming to high temperature. High temperature means there will be vasodilatation and the vessels will enlarge. Now, the temperature here is a bit high because I close the AC and fan so that the proper recording can take place. So, my veins are dilating and I am sweating a bit. So, this is the automatic system. If this is very cold, you have gone to a cold place and it is say minus 20 degree temperature and you have to go on a hill due to some duty or you are uh, you know, climbing a hill. In this minus temperature you are caught in some place due to some reason. So there will be vasoconstriction and also there will be more heat production. So similarly if we have uh, low blood sugar or high blood sugar low blood pressure or high blood pressure. So what will take place that these disruptors will cause a efferent stress to the baroreceptors, to the thermoreceptors and these receptors will receive this disruption stimulus. So they will receive this stimulus that is called efferent means coming, the stimulus is coming and these receptors will further pass on to the command and control center which is basically the endocrinal systems and the nervous system. So from the pitch tree body and other places, for example, if the thyroid hormone is less and metabolism going low, so thyroid stimulating hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone, releasing hormone will be released. So this will release the thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone will stimulate thyroid and no thyroxin will come. More thyroxin will come, the more cells will function, there will be more metabolic rate and the body will uh, function normally. So this is one example, like a sugar is less, the corticosteroids in any stress state, or the insulin, uh, adrenaline, noradrenaline, ephrine. So these things are secreted. Or the opposite of, of acetylcholine. So this is a negative feedback mechanism, means something goes up. So the body systems try to bring it down. Something goes down, the body system work opposite and tries to bring it up. So this is negative to the situation. This is called negative feedback system. This is basic to this homeostatic uh, phenomena which makes all organisms survive. Not me or you, every organism which is surviving here. Which is whether it is helpful, is symbiotic to us or it is helpful to us like lactobacilli or it is like a covid virus. So, whatever they are surviving, they have some systems within them. So, this uh, is the basic concept of hemostasis and I will close this lecture at this place and next lecture I will take on the basis of what is the value of hemostasis for a surgeon as relevant to a surgical practice. Thank you very much. If you like my channel, press the like button and press the bell button and give good comments and if you want to listen something more you have queries under the comment section you can ask the question thank you very much we will meet again